said your pearls. What is it? She her. I'm she her. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> God gave this to me a while ago. Actually, a few weeks before I was, you know, said, said that I was I was told to do it. <clears throat> and it's called that Come to Jesus Moment, and everybody has a little booklet there that I made. And you crocheted the things and it tells us that <clears throat> throughout the throughout the New Testament, we see many stories of having people having their come to Jesus moment. Mm -hmm. But we never thought about it in that context because mm. we've read a lot of these, most of these are very familiar and mm. we read them over and over again, but mm. we never looked at them in a way that we're gonna look at them today. Mm -hmm. um, all of the stories indicate that they had a come to Jesus moment. Some of them were positive. <clears throat> some of them were negative mm -hmm. some of them were for learning mm -hmm. some were for reprimand some were for knowledge but no matter what what happened or the way it happened they all came face to face with Jesus we can go right back to the beginning and the first story is let me get mine <clears throat> In the first story, we see the birth of Jesus, and the, the first people who came to Jesus were the shepherds. Hmm. In the fields not far from the cave where Jesus, where Christ was born, shepherds were keeping night watch over their flock. They were terrified when suddenly the sky was filled with light, and an angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy which shall be to all peoples. For today, in the town of David, the Savior has been born to you, who is Christ the Lord. That they might recognize him, the angels gave them a sign. You will find an infant wrapped in winding bands and lying in a manger. Then a host of angels joined the heavenly messenger, and the night was made joyous with angelic song. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his men <clears throat> of goodwill. After the angels departed and the echo of their song had died away, the shepherds went in haste to search for the child. They found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in the manger. And when they had seen, they understood what had been told them concerning the child. With simple faith, they believed the messenger, message <clears throat> they had heard from the angels. From the shepherds, Mary learned of the appearance of the angels and of their glory, song of glory, but she kept silent about these wonders, thinking over them in her heart. As the shepherds returned to the flock, glorifying and praising God for all things they had heard and seen. So there they came, <clears throat> they had their first come to Jesus. And I guess they did know that he was special and unique. So the experience for them was very positive. Then we have the three wise men who came. On the top of each uh, page, it says where you can find the Bible passage. The first one was from Luke 2, and the second is from Matthew 2. <clears throat> so the three wise men, again, I mean, I'm sorry, a large, richly outfitted caravan of camels directed by three distinguished men called Magi, and a <clears throat> platoon of servants moved into Jerusalem. As they made their way into the city, a crowd gathered around them. The question of the Magi, where is he? Is he that he is born the king of the Jews? Created surprise and wonder. When Herod heard the question of the Magi, he not only wondered, there was much trouble because he feared that his own throne, immediately he decided that he would make every effort to find this new king and then do away with him. <coughs> Hurriedly, Herod assembled the chief priests and scribes. These men knew the prophecy of Michaelis and one, and at once told Herod, the king is to be born in Bethlehem of Judea. In a secret interview, Herod told the Magi where to find the newborn king and then inquired from them when the star first appeared and how long they had been on the way. He wanted to get some idea of the age of this new king. 
Then in deceitful and sacrilegious words, he told the Magi to return after they found this infant king, for he too wished to pay him homage. Satisfied and happy, they were at length at the end of their journey and about to see the heavenly child. The Magi resumed their traveling. Great was their joy, for as soon as they left Jerusalem, the star they had seen in the east directed them once more. The Holy Family no longer lived in a cave, but it moved to a monastery home in Bethlehem. Now, this was in a different Bible, so. This must be a children's Bible. It, it was. Oh, Some of I it mean, was although children. I would say Ratoon is not exactly a word you use for children. That it's was very well. descriptive. I've never heard of them living in a cave. It was um, from, some of these are from children. I'm mm-hmm. guessing that because it also says that there were three wise men when the Bible actually doesn't say how many there were. Hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's got tradition in there, too. I was going to mm-hmm. say it's, it's embellished, the, the, the way that it's worded. Mm-hmm. Part of the draw to the this when I used was a picture. Well, I figured that out, yeah. It's because pictures. I looked at pictures in lots of Bibles, mm-hmm. and they did not depict the definitiveness of what was happening. Mm-hmm. Right, you know. Right, yeah. And I don't know. I I guess I I changed one of them, but um, I could show you in my you know research the other pictures that were not as definitive as this. And even as adults, I think even people newly starting out mm-hmm. in Christ could benefit from seeing something more visual than yeah, what we do see sometimes. Definitely. <clears throat> oh, that's Micah's prophecy. Okay, I was trying to figure out who Micaeus was. The king that's they Micah. saw lived in no palace and looked as ordinary child might look. Mm-hmm. Supernaturally guided by God's spirit and enlightened in heart and mind, those holy men knew that the light that had appeared in the east and had guided them to Bethlehem was no ordinary star, and that the child they saw was no ordinary child. They knew they were in the presence of the Messiah, who would enlighten both Jew and Gentile. They knelt and adored the infant king and offered their gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. So here we have another one. <coughs> Who they came to Jesus, and that was quite positive. Mm-hmm. Except for Herod. Herod was like, mm. well, Herod wasn't there. Very Herod. true. He was the king back there who told them to go. Oh, okay. And he wanted the information from them mm. so that he could do his dastardly deed. Well, he wanted to. But they were told after that, Jesus and Joseph were told not to go back. Well, so were the Magi. I was seeing if they mentioned that. They did. Well, they did. They did, but I cut it off because oh, I Oh, okay. Because the Magi, it also says, well, I mean, obviously you can't have the thing that's a thousand pages, but mm-hmm. they, right. that would be the Bible. <laughs> we read the Bible. But they did. It, it, it was another they had section, a dream, but I had to, yeah. you know, take what I could fit on the page. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we are here. We have Jesus being baptized. He, in essence, is going to John, who, in essence, went to him. So this is a two-way thing to where they both had their moment. But for John, Jesus coming to him was more relevant than the other way around. Mm -hmm. Luke 3, the gospel tells us that the word of the Lord that is The inspiration to teach God's message came to John, son of Zechariah, in the desert. He came upon the Jordan, preaching the baptism of penance for the remission of sins. John's preaching aroused a spirit of expectation among his hearers so that they wondered if perhaps he were not the Christ, that is, the Messiah for whom they were waiting. John told them he was not, but said to them, There is one to come who is greater than I, the scrap of whose shoe. I am not worthy to lose. The fame of John's preaching spread throughout Judea, so that one day it even reached the little village of Nazareth. When Jesus learned of it, he knew that this was the moment set by his heavenly Father to begin his public life. He parted from his dear mother and set toward the Jordan with a small group of pilgrimage of penance. When they reached the Jordan, Christ and his companions waited in line to be baptized. Now John knew that the Messiah 
would one day come to, to the Jordan, and when in turn Jesus stood in the water before him by an inspiration from on high, he recognized Christ. John said, it is I who ought to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? Humbly, quietly, Christ answered, let it be so now, for so it is fitting for us to fulfill all justice. Immediately coming up from the water, Christ saw the heavens open and the Holy Ghost in the form of a dove descend upon him, and a voice from, voice from heaven was heard saying, this is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. took him with them and they couldn't find him anywhere else <clears throat> so it was his one of the, I guess it would be one of the first times he was only 12 at the time mm -hmm. and he went and all these men s sat and listened to a child and had their Jesus moment mm -hmm. every year at that time of past Joseph and Mary as did most of the devout Jewish families went to the temple in Jerusalem. When he was 12 years old, Jesus accompanied his parents. <clears throat> After the solemn feast was over, Joseph and Mary in company with their relatives and friends started to return trip to Nazareth. But Jesus, all unknown to them, remained in Jerusalem. The party had come a day's journey before Jesus was missed. Confused and full of grief and anxiety. Mary and Joseph retraced their steps toward Jerusalem. For two days, a sorrowful couple searched with aching hearts throughout the length and breadth of the big, crowded city for their lost child. Then on the third day, they went to the temple. They saw him sitting and talking with the doctors of the law. Seeing him, they were filled with joy, but they were, could not understand. They could not understand. Mary, following the impulse of her aching heart, ran to him and embraced him. Son, she said, touching him, why have you done this? In great sorrow, your father and I have been looking for you. So now Mary is about to have, Mary and Joseph are about to have their mm. come to Jesus moment. Mm. Jesus looked at his parents lovingly and then gave them an answer that made him wonder. How is it that you sought me? He replied. Do you not know that I must be about your father's business? That sounds a little bit like a reprimand. Not really a reprimand. What would be a better word? Um, rebuke. Until this happening, Jesus yeah. had always... Huh? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Until this happening, Jesus had always acted as any other child might act, but this incident gave his parents a strange feeling that he had grown up, knowing him to be God and Savior of the world. They began to realize that he would have to suffer to save it. But Jesus went down with them to Nazareth and was obedient to them. And then for 18 years, he led a hidden life. But often during these years, Mary thought over the words that Jesus had said, for she had kept them always in her heart. The gospel sums up these years of our Lord by saying, he grew in wisdom and age and grace before God and men. But it shows that even though she was upset, she did accept. Mm what he had said to her. <laughs> she said, you must have known about it. <laughs> you knew it had to happen, right? I, I did, I did. I told, I didn't know what you were doing. You didn't tell me. So no no messages about sermons have been, or about stuff has been exchanged. So it's just okay. Is that good or bad? That's no, good. it's good. It's just the God thing. You're kind of dipping into my sermon a little bit, but we had you to talk about like what each other's doing. So then, the next time we we find Jesus is, um, would you say this is his first miracle, the wedding? The wedding is supposed to be his first miracle. Yeah. That's what people say. Yes. Mm -hmm. On the third, oh, this is from John two English Standard Version. On the third day, there was a wedding at Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Once again, she's going to come another time to her Jesus moment, and also the people of the wedding are going to come to their Jesus moment when he performs a miracle. On the third day, there was a wedding at Canaan in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus also was invited to the wedding of the disciples. 
when the wine ran out, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. And Jesus said to her, woman, what does this have to do with me? Mm -hmm. My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Now there were six stone water jars, therefore the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water, and they filled them up to the brim. And he said to them, now draw some water, and they filled them, wait a minute, and he said to them, now draw some out and take it to the master of the feast. So they took it, and when the master of the feast tasted the water, now became wine, and did not know where it came from. The servants had drawn the water new. The master of the feast called the bridegroom and said, Can everyone serve the good wine first? And then people have drunk freely and the poor wine. But you have kept the good wine until now. This is the first time Jesus did it, came in Galilee and manifested his glory, and his disciples believed in him. So with Mary got something, the disciples got something, some of the people at the wedding, mm -hmm. they didn't know how lucky they all were. No, they didn't. You know, getting to the place where, I mean, when the shepherds, so the baby, I mean, they knew, but they, they didn't, didn't know. really know. Mm -hmm. right. It makes me think of what we've said when you talk about, like, these old shows, like, imagine being at the pilot for All in the Family. It was history. But you didn't know, they didn't know it was no, they history. Know. They were just there watching the show. Or like the first people who saw the first show of Hamilton. Mm -hmm. It's history. Yeah. And, yeah. The, and there they all, this is, this is an interesting analogy. They all had doubts mm -hmm. about those shows. And were oh, they, they going to go? Them. And <laughs> were they going to um, make it? And mm -hmm. would the people accept what they were saying? Is they were really groundbreaking. So mm -hmm. it's the same analogy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the next miracle we find in John 6 is he, Jesus feeds the 5,000. So now we're dealing with his disciples. He's coming, they're coming to him saying, hey, look, we don't have enough stuff. And he, so he, he they're really seeing him too. And it, you know, they said they believed him and they said they knew he was who it was, but it was a different thing when you come and you only have a cup, one fish and a little bread for 5,000. Sometime after the, this, Jesus crossed to the far shore of the Sea of Galilee, that is the Sea of Tiberias, and a great cow, crowd of people followed him because they saw the signs he had performed by healing the sick. Then Jesus went up the mountainside and sat down with his disciples. The Jewish Passover fest, festival was near. When Jesus looked up and saw a great cow coming toward him, he said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? He asked this only to test him, for he already had in his mind what he was going to do. Philip answered him, It would take more than a half a year's wages to buy enough bread for each one of each one to have a bite. Mm -hmm. Another of his disciples, Andrew Simon, Peter's brother, spoke up, Here's a boy with five small barley loaves and two small but how, will they, how far will they go among so many? Jesus said, have the people sit down. There's plenty of grass in that place. And they sat down. About 5,000 men were there. I thought that was interesting. Mm -hmm. They didn't say that they were women there. Doesn't it say in some, it may not be in the translation that you use. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it says at the end there were 5,000 not counting women and children. Yeah. Oh, that was it. So there was like easily double or triple that. At least, yeah. Mm -hmm. This is straight from, you know, mm -hmm. right. yeah. It might be in a footnote online, or mm -hmm. it, it might be in a different, in a different, um, yeah, gospel. This, this picture doesn't depict what I've seen before. I've seen women and children. Mm -hmm. A big yeah. group. And a big group. A yeah, big this group. does. That's a lot of people. Jesus mm -hmm. then took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. When they had all had enough to eat, he said to his disciples, gather the pieces that are left over, let nothing be wasted. So he gathered them and filled 12 baskets with the pieces of five barley loaves left over by those who had eaten. After the people saw the sign Jesus performed, they began to say, surely this is the prophet who has come into the world. So all you guys have to do now is make some loaves and fishes. 
get bigger and then they'll believe you. Right. So it's a joke. I mean, I do have a bread maker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jesus at with Jacob 12. Now here's what we have. We see a woman actually coming to Jesus. Right? Hey, I'm, I'm right. Is that the right thing? Uh, we missed the we man born one. the man born blind. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah I did. I, John did. I don't know where mine is. Do you want to borrow Well, you know what? Why don't, um, oh, maybe, maybe it's caught here. It is, it's caught. Ah, uh, I'm sorry. Well, it's might okay. Be, might be even stuck together. <laughs> it's okay. Okay, we have John 9. We have Jesus healed a man born blind. As he went along, he saw a blind man from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned this man? Who sinned this man or his parents that he was born blind? Now, I thought that was interesting mm -hmm. because that's the old kind of thing that if your kid is born with something wrong with them, that you must have done something wrong. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. they didn't have genetics knowledge like we do. Neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus, but this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. As long as this day, we must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. After saying this, he spit on the ground, made some mud with the saliva, and put it on the man's eyes. Go, he told him, wash in the pool of Salam. This word means sent. So the man went and washed and came, came back, came home seeing. His neighbors and those who had formerly seen him begging asked, isn't this the same man who used to sit and beg? Some claimed that he was. Others said, no, he only looks like him. But he himself insisted, I am the man. How then were your eyes opened, they asked. He replied, the man may call Jesus, made some mud and put it in my eyes. He told me to go to Salome and wash, so I went and washed. He had a real moment with Jesus. Mm -hmm. A really, really, really eye-opening. <laughs> Literally. 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 Jesus and Jacob saw, here we come upon a woman, aside from his mother, who he is come to do. What was that? Nothing. They just got they into the whole happy dance with the woman. She wouldn't have dressed like that. John 4. They certainly have an innuendo in her attire, don't they? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that ain't there. That make her look not good. No, I, I, I'm just, well. Oh, it's that facial expression. We're like going to have to like redo all these for kids. Like, okay. I, I, all right. <laughs> yeah, well. We'll have to do our own kids. She probably too. wasn't even that young, right? Probably not if oh, she, she had wasn't. five husbands. Yeah. Hmm. The hostility of the priests in the temple forced Jesus to leave Judea. He and his apostles set out for Galilee, taking their road to Samaria. At noon, after walking up the mountain road, they reached Jacob's well. Jesus rested there while the apostles went to the city to buy food. A woman came to the well to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me a drink, give me to drink. Now, according to custom, a Jew never addressed the Samaritan because the two groups, though distinctly related, had become bitter enemies. The surprised woman said, how is it that you're being a Jew who has water from a Samaritan? Looking at her, Jesus said, if you knew the gift of God and who it is, who is asking you for water, you would perhaps ask for living water. Sir, she replied, how can you give me water? You have nothing wherewith to draw water. Then Jesus said, whoever drinks this water will thirst again, but who drinks the water I shall give him will not thirst, will not thirst forever. The woman quickly replied was, give me this living water so that I shall never need to come here to draw water. Jesus challenged her, go, he said, call your husband and come here. Thunderstruck at first, the woman said she had no husband, but when she learned that Jesus knew that she had five husbands, she admired that. He was a prophet and then cunning Cunningly exchanged the subject. Where are we to worship? She asked. Here in Samaria or in Jerusalem? The answer came with gentleness and love. Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when neither nor in Jerusalem 
where we worship the Father. Salvation is from the Jews, from the time is already come, when a true worshiper will worship the Father in spirit and truth. This reply reminded the woman of the expected Messiah. She said, I know the Messiah is coming, and when he comes, he will tell all things. Jesus then revealed himself to her. Who speak you with you and he? She believed her conversation was complete. Putting her picture down, she ran away to the city to invite her townsfolk to come and see Jesus. Would you like to say something, Nathan? <laughs> Go ahead. Um, then she cunningly changed the subject. That's wow. I'm yeah. just like they really painted a picture of her. They took a lot of creative liberties. You the were there with your eye scratching your eyebrow. It was like okay. I hadn't thought about the age thing before, but if she was, she was most likely a part of the Leverett system. Yeah. So she was married, and then he died, and then she kept having to marry all her his brothers mm -hmm. or close relatives to try and produce an heir. Mm -hmm. So if she'd been through five different men, she probably wasn't thirty. And it wouldn't have been in her best interest to kill off each of her husbands because husband meant survival. Right. So it's like, it's not a Black Widow version. Like if she were young, the implication would be that she, that all these people have died off real quick, or maybe she had something to do with their deaths. She's gone through five husbands in like a really short time. Who do you think that was? There's implication. Why do I want to see Black Widow now? Yes. Okay. <laughs> but there's a lot of controversy always about the woman at the well. Oh, yeah. Isn't there? People say she is a prostitute. They say that about yeah, a lot that about of Mary Magdalene. Nobody said she was a prostitute. I thought they No, they just said she was living with some guy she wasn't married with, so they called her a whore, but they were calling it colloquially. They weren't, like, it, it was, you know, like, mm. like they do it, you know, they, they, they were doing it in the social context that we have of society and these issues today. And they're imposing that when if she was a Samaritan, they were the OG pure, purity culture. So mm -hmm. they like wrote are writing a whole narrative that's not in there. Well, it gave the impression that she wasn't a nice lady. No, it didn't. No, no. It was awful, and that that's children, and so that that's a child's impression of her. Mm -hmm. I don't I think that, that a that. lot of depending on the age group of the child that they would understand mm -hmm. cunningly. They would they, not. They would, they would. No, no, but even so, that's, that's it's not the concerning. Way to yes, it's grooming. Okay. Yeah. Jesus walks on the water. Mark six. This six. This was for his disciples, and as long as they had been with him, and as much as they had seen, he, they still had to have their come to Jesus moment. The apostles were not pleased about leaving. Bethesda without Jesus, but soon a more urgent problem made them forget their disappointment. A strong wind drove them off their course, and experienced fishermen, though they were, they made little headway. When early morning broke, they were lost and discouraged. There was just one path that led from Jesus in Bethesda to disheartened apostles, and that was over the waters, and he took it. Through the mist of early dawn, those struggling fishermen saw a figure moving over the water toward them. They all saw it. As it moved nearer, they were terror-stricken. They cried, it is a ghost. Above the noise of the wind and the waves, there came a familiar and most welcome voice. Take courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. Their fear was at an end. With Jesus there, they knew all their troubles were over. Peter impulsively and always wanted to be near the master he loved called out if it be you lord bid me to come to you upon the water jesus said come immediately peter stepped down upon the water and walked toward the approaching figure but suddenly he became conscious of what he was doing and his courage failed and he cried out lord save me jesus extended his hand to peter and said oh you of little faith why do you doubt they both entered the ship the wind stopped and the moment The oh, you have little faith. Why did he doubt? It's like, wow, okay, <laughs> that's fine. What you, what, what is? No, the when he 
Jesus is just like, oh, you have little faith. Why did you doubt? And it's like, how often can Jesus basically say that to us nowadays? A lot. Yeah. Well, if when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith in the earth? That was the question that the lady was asked. Okay. Martha and Mary, they're both going to get there and come to Jesus moment. If you, there's a lot more about this subject or about people coming to Jesus or having their Jesus moment, and Luke has a lot of them in there. So really, Luke is a yeah, lot Luke's a very of, personal uh, one. Real, a lot of miracles, a lot of what people. What did you say Luke's gospel was? Basically, a giant story. A what? A giant story, because Matthew is more of kind of like teaching. Mm -hmm. Mark is like, this is Jesus, a bridge. So it's like a short quick version of it. John is like, dude, Jesus <laughs> <laughs> And then Luke is just kind of like, once upon a time, there was a guy named Jesus, and all these people had to come to Jesus meeting with him. <laughs> Basically, yeah. Wow. <laughs> Matthew's the textbook, Mark is the anime abridged. Mark is the story. Luke is the storybook, and John is the... That's the true? Yes. Yeah? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> After our Lord had finished his story about the Good Samaritan, he and his apostles continued their walk the dangerous road from Jerusalem to Jericho. About halfway along the main road, a side road ran south of Bethany. The whole party took the road. Jesus was on his way to the house of his friends, Lazarus and Martha and Mary. It was a stopping place familiar to the apostles. They were always welcome there. By mid-morning, they reached a comfortable home built against a wooded hill. Then after a hearty welcome, the company settled down in the sunny courtyard near the entrance of the house. Martha stepped into the house, full of interest in preparing a meal for the guests. As Martha started to work, she realized that Mary had not come to help her. She waited, and yet Mary did not come. Somewhat anxious about getting everything in readiness, she went out to look for Mary. Surprised, she saw Mary sitting at the feet of Jesus, intent on every word he said. Mary did not even notice Martha was looking for her. <laughs> Martha probably politely, but yet somewhat peevishly, addressed herself to Jesus. Lord, it is, uh, it is no concern of yours that my sister had left you alone to serve. Tell her to help me. Mary remained silent and looked at Jesus, wondering if he would tell her to leave. Jesus answered Martha affectionately, but with some seriousness. Martha, Martha. You are anxious and troubled about many things, and yet, but one thing is necessary. Then pointing to her sister Mary, he continued, Mary has chosen the best part and will not be taken away from her. Jesus spoke in Mary's defense and admonished Martha. Mary, in listening to the words of Jesus and putting all else out of her mind, was doing a better thing than Martha. Martha, on the other hand, was doing a very necessary work. And Jesus did not tell her to stop her work and sit down and listen to him. In speaking to these two sisters, as he did, Jesus wants us to understand that in life there are times when we should do nothing but listen and think about the word of God. And at other times we should do the things we, that must be done. The first is the better thing to do and the more important one. The second is necessary and must be attended to. After Christ's general admonishment, Martha returned to her work without annoyance, without Mary, and Jesus later enjoyed and was grateful for the services of Martha. Okay, now Lazarus is a long one um, because, well, because it is, but anyway. <laughs> um, he had to, the, his, their moment uh, coming to Jesus his sisters, all the people in the community. There are a lot of people involved in this particular passage in the Bible. Mm -hmm. um, oh, okay. It's, this is from oh, John 11. Lazarus of Bethany had fallen sick. His sisters Martha and Mary, were they the same ones? They were the, so Lazarus was their brother. Their brother. Mm -hmm. oh, was the same people. Seeing that their brother's illness was growing worse, sent a message to Jesus, their friend, saying, Lord, behold, he whom you 
you who are the sick. Hearing it, Jesus said, the sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified by it. Although Jesus loved Mar Martha and Mary, he still remained two days longer in Pera. After that time, he said to the, to the apostles, let us go again to Judea. The disciples remembered that at their last visit, they had to leave Jerusalem for fear of being stoned. They said, Rabbi, just now the Jews are seeking to stone you, and you are going there again. Jesus quieted their fears by telling them nothing happened unless it be God's will. Then he told the, them the reason for the journey. Lazarus, Lazarus, our friend, sleeps, but I go to wake him from his sleep. The disciples, not anxious to go, said, Lord, if he sleeps, it is well. They thought of sleep as a sign of physical improvement. Then Jesus said to them finally, Lazarus is dead. And I rejoice on your account that I was not there, that you may believe, but let us go now. The disciples made ready to follow Jesus, but their hearts were disturbed. Thomas tried to cover his fears and theirs by saying, with an intent that covers, let us go, also go, that we may die with him. So on the fourth day after Having received the message, they set out for Bethany. Bethany was a short distance from Jerusalem, and many relatives and friends had come to Bethany to comfort Martha and Mary. Martha, when she heard that Jesus was coming, went out to meet him while Mary remained at home. Throwing herself at the old Lord's feet, Martha said, Lord, if you had been there, my brother would not have died. And then, hinting timidly, she showed her great expectation of seeing her brother again by saying simply, but even now I know whatever you ask of God, God will give to you. Jesus said simply, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know he will rise again in the resurrection when the last day comes. Then in a solemn manner, Jesus said some very beautiful words. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, even if he dies, shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? With sincere faith, Martha replied, Yes, Lord, I believe you. You are the Christ, the Son of God, who has come into the world. With this, Martha went to call her sister Mary, who was in the midst of relatives and friends. Martha whispered to her, The Master is here, and bid you come swiftly. Mary ran to him, and throwing herself on her knees, weeping repeatedly, the words Martha had said, Lord, if you had been there, my brother would not have died. The Jews who were in the house with Mary accompanied her when they saw her rise speedily and run toward her tomb, went out following her, saying, She has gone to weep. See Mary and her companions and tears, Jesus sighed deeply and was troubled in spirit. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Come and see, and Jesus wept. When those present saw Jesus weep, they said, See how he loved him. See how he loved him. But now all were moved by our, our Lord's tears. Some could not. He who opened the eyes of the man born blind had caused this man would not die. Jesus again gave a deep sigh as he came to the, the tomb. It was a cave and a stone was laid over, taking the stone away, Jesus commanded. Martha Lazarus, sister, of, objected. She said, Lord, by the time he has already decayed for four days. With a single reproach in his voice, Jesus said to Martha, Have I not told you that if you believe, you shall behold the glory of God? Then lifting his eyes toward heaven, he prayed, Father, I thank you for hearing my prayer. For myself I know that you hear me in all times. But I say this for the people that are standing around and that may learn to believe in you have, who have sent me. When he said this, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And at once he who had been dead came forth, bound hands and feet, and his face bound about with the wrappings of death. Jesus said to them, Loose him and let him go. Okay, now this is where Jesus goes, it shows us Jesus was kind of angry, and he goes into the temple, and the sellers have to deal with their come to Jesus moment and this is Matthew 21 St. Matthew tells us that Capernaum was Christ's own town in our Lord's day it was well populated and easily reached by roads which led both east and west 
It was picturesque up against the wooded hills on the edge of the blue water of Lake Janissaret. Seemingly, the beauty of this lake had strong attraction for Christ. Many times he taught the multitudes on its shores, and often both by day and by night. He, with his disciples, sailed its cool waters in the gospel stories. The lake is also referred to as the Sea of Tiberias or the Sea of Galilee. If Christ loved the natural beauty of the spot, he loved its people who walked all day above all who heard more of his sacred teachings. After the wedding at Cana, Christ and his disciples and his mother and her relatives went down to Capernaum to get remained there a few days. They were prepared to leave on a pilgrimage to Jesus to celebrate the past. For this feast, all roads to Jerusalem were thronged with faithful Jews full of joy that once again they might enter the holy city and offer a sacrifice in their magnificent temple. When Christ entered Solomon's porch, he saw a bewildered sight fire, sellers, and money changers were loud and intent upon their bargaining. This was confu there was confusion and uproar and that <clears throat> indignation and holy anger filled the heart of Christ. He made a whip of cords with it drove these des desecrations from his father's house. Stunned, they made no resistance. Sellers and their animals with them ran in panic before Christ's flashing eyes and upraised hands arm. He released the dogs and overturned the tables of the money changers. His voice was heard above the din. Get these things out. Do not make the house of my father a den of thieves. The guilty priests were indignant at the authority Christ took upon himself and even though in their hearts they knew his action was right, they asked him angrily, by what authority have you done this? Christ looked at them calmly and gave them a reply which was above their understanding. But but one which they held against him, even to Calvary. Destroy the temple in three days, and I will raise it up. By this temple, Christ was referring to his own body, which he would put, which he would raise up on the third day after the Jews had put him to death. They did not dare say more to him. When evening came, Christ left the city. They got there. They got the airport. Okay, now this last one is actually... The one that first came to me, mm -hmm. and when I did the research, I, it's about the woman with the blood. Mm -hmm. There are absolutely no pictures. <laughs> mm. And in each Bible that I saw, I, I, maybe Leanne has a million Bibles, so it could have been one of those. But I'm thinking, I could have sworn that I've seen a picture, but that doesn't mean it was in a Bible. Okay. And it, I mean, it, I, I, I'm going to look it up. Go ahead. <laughs> and in different, I read different Bible verses about this. And one of the things noted in a children's Bible is that very little is said because the her her illness or her dilemma or whatever she had. They're leaning toward women and their. Their monthly mm -hmm. visitors. Huh. So there's very little context wise in what is said. Mm -hmm. And I, when I first uh, read this or thought about it, she waited, and they didn't say that in this. Mm. She waited all day because she knew he was coming. Mm. And she wanted to get close to him or to touch him or to have him heal her some way and there's very little about this mm -hmm. in the Bible that I read that maybe Leo will come up with something else well somebody also pointed out that, that we're assuming that that's what it was but it could have been something it else. could have been something mm -hmm. else that, that that's the assumption but that we really don't know but mm -hmm. I don't think that in a children's Bible they want to take the chance Right, they don't want to run the risk. They don't want to run the risk. I mean, the gross, they can't make the story cute and picturesque and right. But yeah. I did this on this, I did this on a special page and I made some flowers. Nice. Just kind of honor her and mm -hmm. give her a little bit of not being noticed that mm -hmm. she really didn't have. Okay. And uh, Luke 8, and a woman having an issue of blood 12 years, which has spent 
all her living living on positions neither could be healed of any came behind him and touched the border of his garment and immediately an issue of blood vanished and Jesus said who touched me when all denied Peter and they that were with him and said master the multitude throng these and press thee and sayest thou who touched me and Jesus said somebody hath touched me for I perceive that virtue is gone out of me and when the woman saw that she was not hid, she came trembling and falling down before him. She declared upon him before all people for what the cause had touched him and how she was healed immediately. And he said unto her daughter, be of good comfort, thy faith has made thee go in peace. That was the best one that gave the most reference to her that I mm -hmm. Okay, so now just a few questions. So when will, not you personally, but when will you, the people, mm -hmm. come to Jesus? The gold one. Mm -hmm. Will you wait until you're blind and can't see? Will you wait until you're in need of a miracle? Will it be when you're drowning and you kind of keep your head above water? Will you wait until you cannot help, get help anywhere else? How about when you are hungry, homeless, lonely, or depressed? How about we are all aware that a lot of folks that we come in contact with and are in need to come to Jesus, like on social media, everyone probably comes across them every day. When will they? All those folks seeking help from Dr. Phil, who are in dire need, but don't have a clue. They are everywhere, you know them, you see them, you speak with them. When is there, when is the time for them to come to Jesus? Now you can play the song. Okay, wait, let me turn that off. It's in the other corner. Yeah. Cool. Let me know when you do it, and I'll, um, everybody gets this. 